I, I fell in love with her for the very first time this one hot sweltering summer night. My head was resting right in between the heat of her breast as she sang songs assuring me of my future. Always knew the right words to say to make me believe in her. Always could verbally perform cartwheels with her parables teaching me. Teaching me how to think on the abstract. Never ever once making me feel less than but equal to the highest common denominator in her she wore. Glasses shaped like cat eyes that night as she fried catfish causing her little cozy three bedroom home to smell of nothing but comfort to me. These, these are memories that I will never forget. Sweat beating up on her forehead. She looked over those black rooms and said, baby, don't dare be deceived. Best believe they hate you. Cause you're beautiful. Not really understanding what she meant, I sat eager, ready to absorb all her wisdom. My little six-year-old spirit was the sponge and her knowledge was the liquid that rehydrated my soul. Told me that my eyes were a reflection of the green that covered Mother Earth. That's why when I was first born, she had quilted me a blanket because somehow she knew. Somehow she knew that my spoken words would bring heat to the coldness of heart that my skin was the same complexion as the white Georgia peaches she used to pick for her homemade cobbler. The only difference is that God made mine just a little bit sweeter. That these freckles were placed on my skin to remind me how only the African can create every shade of ethnic tone. From the very lightest to the absolute darkest. And Big Mama was so funny, she would say, baby, if they still don't believe you, then lift up the back of your tracks and show them your naps. That's the proof that my natural blonde hair shines like the gold found in the ebony land of Ghana, graciously given to me by my Lord and Savior. All these attributes bestowed unto me, assuring me that I am royalty. But Big Mama, I was playing at the park. <laughs> Little white boy asked me what color I was. So I, I told him I was black. She said, hush up listening to all that foolishness because you are not black. Let me tell you who you are. You are cousin to the Haitian floating for freedom on the same color ocean that my eyes used to cry salty, slave tears. Sister to the Virginia with flesh dark as coal and hair the same texture as the cotton that I used to pick. Daughter to the Ethiopian eunuch searching for salvation and mother to a future generation of grave that refuses to see either black or white and grandbaby. Grandbaby to these old red bones. So peaches. Never forget that I, that you, that we represent every shade of ethnic tone, see I. I fell in love with her for the very first time this one hot sweltering summer night in my head. My head was resting right in between the heat of her breasts as she sang songs assuring me of my future. Maybe far away or maybe real near bore me out of her own womb. It might as well have been a tomb for the dead. She never really knew true comfort. From a feeling to a thought, from a thought to a touch, she always told me that I was conceived in nothing but love. But to this very day, at this very moment in time, I really wonder if she even knows what true love even looks like. I mean, little pale skin, green-eyed heathenistic babies that resemble their heathenistic ancestors couldn't possibly deserve all of her young love, right? And I finally abandoned the thought of her holding me. Grabbing my chubby cheeks in between her fingers and thumbs, pressing her swollen, bloody, battered lips against mine, hollering, bitch, you act just like your trifling daddy. Okay. 
When feelings of uncontrollable anger suddenly surface sometimes, young mommies don't always know the right words to say. I mean, how could she? Big Mama never ever thought that she would have to teach her own baby how to raise her own babies. First day's birth at 15, second at 20, she hated us because she felt like we robbed her of all of her young wonder, young wonder years. Unable to confess her true feelings of my success, she continues to verbally assault me. You ain't nothing but a hoe, ain't never gonna be nothing but a dirty hoe, okay? Let me show you how I can quickly bring to pass those harmful words you say. I hate myself because I hate the you and me. Learned at a young age how to get my rib paid by laying on my back. I'm a hustler, I'm a hustler, homie, ask about me. She'll see. I'll make her all so proud of me. Mommy. All I want to do is love you. Please. Allow my pen to rewrite the storm and stop the rain from falling on you. And if you would allow me to, I will help you rewrite the pages of your life's book. And then you can read to your grandbabies. Not about your defeat, but your triumph. See, I don't really care too much about the past. And tomorrow will eventually take care of itself. And for far too many years now, I felt like you were oh so far away. Even though you were always real nearby. And as old as I am, I still long to hear you call me your baby. Papa was a Roman stone. Wherever he laid his hat was his home. And when that nigga died, yeah, I'm gonna be right there. Despite the fact. Out of you. Come on. The innocence of youth was the instrument you used to play rhythms, melodies, and break beats on and inside her. Your spirits were happy and high as I came. Bursting out of you, you reached down into the clay and began to form and fashion her red bones into the woman that you wanted her to become well before her time as she so naively depended and trusted in you. Nigga, you raped her soul as you stole her very seconds of innocence like a thief. Your bodies were warm and wet as I came. Bursting out of you, you began to massage and caress those red bones until you finally convinced her to open up those thigh bones to receive you. Mm. And that she did. It was June 13th, 1975. A star was born to be teased and ridiculed all because of the color of her skin. You were never there to give me butterfly kisses, tuck me in, or even told me that I was beautiful. So because of the lack of headship in my life, I began to develop a low self-image of myself because you never explained to me the worth of myself. This world does not revolve around you, nigga. Staring at my reflection in the mirror reminds me that I came bursting out of you. You're not even worthy of the title of father or daddy, so I choose to call you sperm donor. You robbed me of my heritage and my lineage. You so stuck on stupid, you don't even realize pictures of you and I the other day. I couldn't have been any more than three days old and you were holding me on that paisley couch at Big Mama's house. You were staring at me as if I was the greatest accomplishment of your life. I would give my very life to have you look at me that way again. But some time has gone on and I'm a little bit older now and only through the love of God I realized that without 
you, there could be no me. So with all the love, passion, and forgiveness I can possibly hold in my heart right now on this mic, I can truly say that I thank God that I came, even if it was bursting out of you. Mm.